Oh, your turn. This video is all about the impacts or the effects of climate change. Okay, so there are lots of different impacts of climate change. There are lots and lots we could talk about. Uh, some examples are sea levels rising, crop yields falling, so the amount of crops we get falling, uh, something called coral reef bleaching, which is where the coral reefs die out and they go a white colour. Uh, species like the polar bear going extinct. More forest fires, we've seen lots of that in Australia and Brazil in the last year. And something called retreating glaciers. So these are just some of the impacts of climate change we could talk about. Um, there are three that you need to know about. So these are rising sea levels, falling crop yields, and retreating glaciers. So the video is going to focus on these three impacts. Okay, so the first one is falling crop yields. Now, before we begin, we need to understand what we mean by a crop yield. So, we're going to have a look at two different farmers here, farmer A and farmer B. Farmer A lives in a rich, developed country like the UK. Farmer B lives in a poorer, developing country. Um, however, both farmers have the same amount of space, the same amount of land in which to grow their crops. So let's say they've both got a square kilometre to grow their crops. Now, farmer A, he can use things like pesticides. He can spray that onto his crops and it kills the bugs that eat the crops. He might be able to add fertilizer to the soil to make it more fertile, to make the crops grow more quickly. And he also might have more advanced seeds. The seeds might be modified uh, to grow more quickly um, or to grow in a certain way. A farmer B, he lives in a developing country. So he's got the same amount of land as farmer A, but he doesn't have pesticides. So some of his crops get eaten. Uh, the soil is less fertile and he also doesn't have those advanced seeds. So therefore, farmer A and farmer B both have the same amount of land, but farmer A gets a larger crop yield. So if they're both growing carrots, farmer A would get far more carrots than farmer B would. Okay, so the crop yield is the amount of crops you can grow on a certain area of land. Now, as we said, uh, crop yields are falling in many parts of the world because of climate change. On this map over here, you can see Africa. Um, all of the areas that are in orange on here, as we can see on the key, are areas that have experienced drought. So we can see lots and lots of drought is being experienced in many, many parts of Central Africa uh, and also Southern Africa here. Uh, also Morocco up here as well and a few parts of Northern Africa. Um, so as the climate changes, certain areas of the world are going to, going to become much drier and therefore they're going to experience drought. And that means that there'll be lower crop yields. More recently, uh, crop yields in East Africa, so roughly over here, these kind of countries like Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, um, have experienced very large swarms of locusts. Now locusts are insects and they eat the crops. Um, and some of these swarms have billions and billions of locusts in them, okay? So crop yields have been falling in certain parts of Africa, okay? And this could lead to food shortages and famines as not enough food will be produced for the population. Okay, so in the, in the short to medium term, this could lead to a lack of food in those countries. Okay, the second impact of climate change. Um, now, before we begin, uh, we need to understand what we mean by a glacier. Here we've got some mountains, we've got a range of mountains here. A glacier is a large block of ice, so a bit like this block here, and it, they move very, very slowly downhill due to gravity. So they're slowly moving downhill, sometimes only up to a few centimetres per year, um, and you normally find them in the mountains. Now, another, So an impact of climate change is that glaciers are starting to melt. And that's what we mean by retreating. It means they're starting to disappear. Um, so how does that work exactly? Well, here we've got a mountain and we've got some glaciers in this mountain. We've got lots and lots of ice in this mountain. As the world gets hotter because of climate change, it means that some of that will melt. So some of that ice is going to begin to melt. Melted ice and melted glaciers then add lots more water to the rivers that flow down from the top of the mountains. Okay, so we know that rivers start in the mountains, they flow down towards the sea, but those rivers will, be, will have far more water because more of the glaciers are melting in the mountains. Now this has two impacts. The first impact in the short term is that it may lead to flooding. 
if those rivers have far more water in them than they can handle, then certain areas further downstream will experience far more flooding. However, in the longer term, um, if these, these glaciers begin to melt, there'll actually be less water going into the rivers each year. So the rivers get lots of their water from the glaciers. In the longer term, if those rivers don't get that water from the glaciers, then there may be what we call water stress. And water stress is a lack of water, a lack of available water for the people who need it. Okay. Um, and the last one, the last impact we're going to look at is rise in sea levels. Now sea levels are rising for two different reasons. The first reason, as we've just talked about, is because glaciers are melting, first of all in the mountains, but also in places like Antarctica um, and Greenland. So you can see here, this is a huge glacier and a big chunk of it has started to melt and fallen into the sea. And that will obviously add more water to the sea and therefore sea levels will go up. The second reason is because when water gets warmer and we know that because the earth is getting hotter, seas and oceans are also getting hotter, and it leads to water getting taken up more space and we call that thermal expansion. Okay, so as the water gets hotter, it takes up more space um, and therefore the sea level rises. So what's the impact of that? Okay, well let's have a look at a place called Tuvalu. Now Tuvalu is over here, so it's right out in the Pacific Ocean, uh, near to Oceana, um, and we can see Tuvalu, if we zoom in on it, is a collection of very, very small, uh, fairly low-lying islands. Okay, so here's Tuvalu over here. Um, if we look on this map over here, we can see it's the northeast of Australia, uh, to the east of Papua New Guinea, so it's out in the Pacific Ocean. Um, but as I said, there's a collection of very, very flat, low-lying, very small islands. So if sea levels begin to rise, some of these islands, and we can see this is an island on Tuvalu here, uh, some of these islands will actually go under the water and they'll be submerged as the sea level rises. Okay, so obviously that has a big impact for the people living there, they'll eventually have to migrate to somewhere else. Um, so that's another key impact of climate change. Okay, so on to uh, an exam question now. Um, so it says study figure one suggests one impact of climate change and it's worth three marks, okay? Now, because it's a suggest question, it means we've been given something to look at and we have to refer to that in our first point. So you refer to, your point should refer to the source, you then explain it to get your second mark and you develop it to get your third mark, okay? So can you pause the video now? You can do this in your head or you can write it on a piece of paper and then restart the video when you're done. Okay, welcome back. Um, here would be a model answer. So uh, the newspaper article was talking about food prices going up. So one impact of climate change is rise in food prices. So we're just referring to the source. That's the impact they're asking for. This is because crop yields have fallen in many African countries. We learned about that earlier. So remember the amount of field is the amount of crops you can grow per area. And this may lead to famines or food insecurity. Okay, so we talked earlier about how uh, if there's a lack of crops, then it may lead to a lack of food in those countries. Okay. If you have any other questions, please speak to your geography teacher.